Hello, my name is Todd Miranda, and the purpose of this presentation is to demonstrate how to create and browse loose XAML pages. So why would we want to browse loose XAML pages? Well, loose XAML pages can be browsed in Internet Explorer as long as the machine has the .NET 3.0 framework installed. And while we don't have a lot of server interactivity, there's no code behind, it's purely just the XAML, because of XAML's great data binding capability, we can effectively replace our HTML pages with a very dynamic XAML page in a browser and have a lot more dynamic and interactive capability in our loose XAML pages than we do in our static HTML and it works effectively the same way. In static HTML you're not going to have a lot of server interactivity as well. So let's see how to do that in Visual Studio. Obviously since these XAML files, the loose XAML files, don't have to be compiled. We could just create these in XAMLPad, which is the XAML editor that comes with the Windows SDK. We could also create them in Notepad. But what's really nice about Visual Studio, with the plugin in Visual Studio, we've got the capability to have IntelliSense. And that's really nice to have that IntelliSense support in our loose XAML pages. So, how do we create a loose XAML project? Well, there's not one. But one of the tricks that I use, and you'll see why I use it, is to create a website. So let's create a new website. We'll create an empty website, and we'll call it Loose XAML. It doesn't matter what language we choose because we're not going to compile it, and we're not going to write any code behind code anyway. So there we go. There's our empty website project. And let's begin by creating a new file. And you would think that you'd go to website, add new item, and choose loose XAML file or XAML file, but you won't find that. One of the reasons is XAML file support was loose XAML file support was originally removed uh, from what was going to go live, and then it was kind of put back in. But there's really no template for loose XAML files. So what I do is I start with a XML file. I just rename that to a XAML file and we'll give this guy na a name, we'll call it main. Maybe this is going to be our first XAML file that we're going to look at. And we do add. Well, obviously it's going to use the XML template, but we're just going to highlight that first line and we're going to remove it. So we're going to create a stack panel. Stack panels are just easy to use, especially for doing demos. Now the only thing we have to do here is include the XAML namespaces. So we're going to include the namespaces. I'm just going to copy and paste them from another XAML file that I had. That's how I do it most of the time is simply copy and paste. Once we include these two namespaces, we should have our IntelliSense. So let's do our in stack panel and you see that we already have our IntelliSense showing up. So, uh, so that's great help to us when we're creating our XAML files. So we said that we don't have any code behind, so we don't have a lot of back-end interactivity. So what can we do with the XAML file? Well, first things first, let's look at why we created the XAML file in an empty web project as opposed to just in a directory on its own. Let's create a text block, and in the text block we're just going to have some very simple text. Hello there. Now, we said we didn't have to compile this. And you might think that if you right click here, you could do display in browser because it's a web project. But remember, the web project doesn't recognize the XAML file extension. However, since it is a web project, we can right click on our web root and simply do view in browser. This will load us up a browser instance. And this is one of the things that I like about doing this in a web project in Visual Studio. When we do browse on our web project, it brings us up into a directory listing mode and shows us the directory of our web project. So here you can see we have our main.xaml file. If you had many loose XAML files in this directory, it would list them all. And from this page, you could choose the one that you wanted to view. In our case, we just want to look at the main.xaml file. So we'll click there and see that our XAML file comes up, our loose XAML file with our text block, hello there. So this is why I use the idea of the browser because it gives us that directory listing so we can select one of the many XAML files that's there, it, which is kind of like our right-clicking and doing view in browser from our XAML file. So 
let's look at what we can do, just a real quick example of what we could do with a loose XAML file. Since we said we didn't have any code behind, we don't have any, any act, interactivity as far as that goes. Let's begin by creating a slider. And we're going to give the slider a name. And we'll call this image slider. We're going to give it a horizontal orientation. And let's say that our max height, no, not our max height, our maximum, sorry, is, we'll say 600. And our minimum, we'll say, is going to be 100. And let's say its current value, we'll just start it out at the lower end. So we'll start it out at 100. OK, so now we've got a slider. Now let's add an image. Now you could think of this as, let's say you had an image gallery. And when you clicked on an image, you wanted to go to a single page that would show just that image. And maybe we'd want them to be able to zoom in on that image on one page. So you've got your photo gallery, and you could click on any image in your photo gallery. We're going to go to the image detail page. Let's say this is our image detail page. So we're going to create an image. We're going to specify a source. And then we're going to specify a width and a height. All right. Now, first thing we need to do is let's add an image to our project so that we know it, where to find it. It's just an easy way to do that. Uh, not a new item. We're going to go add an existing item. And let's go to our desktop. And we'll just grab an image that we've got sitting on our desktop and add it to the project. So our source now is going to be that image. And we want our width and height to be adjusted based on the value of the slider. So let's use some data binding expressions here. Let's say we're going to do a binding. And the element name that we want to bind to is image slider. All right, And the path that we want to bind to is its value. So effectively, what we've done is we've said the width is going to be bound to the value of our slider. And just so that we maintain the same aspect ratio, we'll set the height to the same thing. So now note that our, our initial value of our slider is going to be 100. So the initial width and height of our image will be 100. We'll have a width of 100 and a height of 100. So that's all there is to it. We've created a slider and an image control. And through some data binding in WPF and in our XAML, through our data binding, we've enabled some dynamicness on this page without having to write any back end code. So let's take a look at that. We'll browse our directory structure again. And OK, yeah, we want to take a look at our main.xaml file. All right, so here's our slider. and. Since we didn't specify a width on our slider, it's going to go ahead and expand it, because a stack panel, by default, will expand many of these elements within, uh, within that particular type of panel. So now, as we move our slider, you can see that our image is adjusting correspondingly. So we didn't have to write any code there, but we got a lot of dynamicness here on this page. So you can imagine what all you can do with some animations, with a, a lot of data binding in these loose XAML pages that can act effectively like a static HTML page, but really hype up the dynamic capabilities that you've got in that page and make it much more interesting than a standard HTML page. And you can browse a loose XAML page directly in uh, IE just like we did. Or if you want to mix HTML and XAML, you could actually have an iframe on an HTML page and host your XAML file there. So that's how I like to create my loose XAML files and display those XAML files in IE.